Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. It is Wednesday night, I believe. I don't know. My days get all kind of mixed up um, nowadays. But we got Zamir White's breakdown tonight. Um, you know, watching Zamir over the last couple of years, people will say things like, you know, he doesn't look the same after two knee injuries or whatever. Um, yeah, it's partially true. Don't get it wrong. Um, but when you go look at his high school tape, this is a kid that averaged, I think, 14 yards per carry or something astronomical like that. I believe when I ran the stats out of him out of high school, he was scoring a touchdown one out of every four touches. That's, you know, receptions included. And he gets to Georgia and, you know, he had the long run against Florida. But apart from that, you know, hadn't really been super explosive. My main concern over the last couple of years has been his ability to make people miss in the open field. Thought he got substantially better at that um, from year one as a contributor to now year two um, as a full-time starter at the running back position. And a lot of people were expecting him to go to the NFL this year um, because, A, it's a really, really loaded running backs room already. It's going to get even more loaded uh, with Lavoisier Carroll showing up on campus now. So a um, lot of mouths to feed in that running back room. So I'm not going to say that Georgia was necessarily encouraging him to go to the NFL draft, but they weren't like begging him to come back, if you know what I mean. So um, I I'm really excited for tonight's film session, uh, you know, in particular because I'm going to show you, I, I kind of rank, or not necessarily rank, but I kind of place running backs into three kind of different categories, right? You've got the big physical downhill back. I'm talking Derrick Henry. Um, I'm talking uh, Todd Gurley. I'm talking Nick Chubb. And I'm talking Samir White. And then you've got these more elusive, more explosive, uh, little quick twitch, uh, you know, gadget type running backs. I'm talking guys like Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, um, DeAndre Swift, or Kenny McIntosh, right? Those types of running backs. And then I have what you call my third category, and this one's really, really rare, um, kind of hybrid backs, right? Where they're big physical backs, but they can also, you know, get involved in the passing game. These are guys like Le'Veon Bell in their prime, right? Where Le'Veon Bell can go out and get you 20, 25 traditional runs and, and carry the boatload of your uh, rushing attack. But they also can get 15 or 5 to 10 targets in the passing game as well. Um, Le'Veon Bell had over 400 touches, you know, rushing and receiving for, I think, three straight years in Pittsburgh. Uh, another guy that I would throw into this ca category would be a guy like Najee Harris, right? Where he can get 15, 20 touches on the college ranks. And if you really want to feed him, he can get 25 uh, touches in the college ranks, rush for 180 yards. But he's also a dynamic weapon out of the backfield as well at six foot two, six foot three, 220 pounds. Um, that's Kendall Milton. I mean, that, that's the future of the position, in my opinion. These hybrids that are real big physical in individuals, but also have the skills to, you know, play in a more modern style offense, more of a spread style offense. Um, so I'll show you what those kind of guys look like as we progress, because I think Georgia has a multitude of those guys, right? They have the Zamir White, they have the Kendall Mil or the Kendall Milton, they have the Kenny McIntosh, and they have James Cook. Um, and then, you know, Dejon Edwards kind of falls in between a uh, does everything good type of back, but does he do one thing great type of back. So I'm um, really excited to show you those. But tonight, of course, is more of a uh, Zamir White specific film study. Uh, and we're going to be showing you clips from Auburn and clips from Alabama. And without further ado, we'll hop right into the tape. So um, a couple of things to know about tonight, if I can get this thing clicked over here. Always gives me issues right off the bat of the show. Uh, we're still working over here on getting everything seam or seamless and streamlined, um, which we need to put that over that. There we go. Um, sorry, guys. Always love technical difficulties right to start the show, but we got it rolling, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, guys, I, I do think his vision has gotten progressively better over the years, right? I think one thing that Zamir does really, really well is what I call getting skinny. Uh, most of the time we, when we use the terms get skinny, we're talking about defensive linemen, right? Splitting a double team or getting in between uh, a, a combo block from an offensive lineman. But Zamir does it as a running back really, really well. He finds the limited access and the little bit of space that's available. And he sticks his foot in the ground, gets north and south and gets skinny and gets what's available. Okay, Zamir's the type of guy who, if there's six yards, he's going to get you nine, right? He's going to finish hard. He's going to finish the run off with physicality. He's going to make that defensive back, make business decisions as the games go along. Make those linebackers kind of regret sticking their nose in and tackling a guy like this. Whereas a guy like Kendall Milton or, excuse me, a guy like Kenny McIntosh or DeAndre Swift in the past, 
might see four yards and boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, they're making drastic jump cuts and getting 12 yards at a clip. So um, Zamir's like right, get north and south type of dude. Don't mess around. Get, get what's there and move on to the next uh, snap. 622. I thought early on in the season, Todd Munkin was doing some things to get Zamir involved in the passing game. Whereas, you know, kind of that thing I put out on Twitter today, whereas the season progressed, he identified that, look, I, if I'm going to design plays up uh, for running backs to be getting the ball in open space, it's going to be for Kenny McIntosh and James Cook. Well, you know, this early on in the season, to see this suddenness from Zamir was checking boxes to me, right? I, I thought as a redshirt freshman, he really struggled to do this right here, which is, and I'll slow it down for you, it's to catch the ball or to receive the ball as a running back, identify a linebacker in KJ Britt who um, is a pretty good open field tackle, Kenny Britt, excuse me, and do that right there. Get him off balance, make him miss, and then get upfield even further and get some more yardage. Um, for him to be involved in the passing game early on in the season, we saw this kind of diminish later on in the year. And I'll show you as we move into the Auburn, or the Alabama game, the difference in where he's running an angle route right here. He is the design check down. He is the hot for the quarterback in the red zone. Get him the ball. Five will get you 12 type of scenario here where he catches the ball, short, easy pitch and catch for his quarterback at five yards. And the next thing you know, he's got a 12-yard gain, okay? Those are the easy touches that, as the year progressed, I don't believe Todd Munkin was really out here trying to get Zamir. He was trying to get them to other backs. But again, I love to see the suddenness, right? How smooth he looks in the open field, the ability, the shiftiness, right? That shows me that he's getting a little more trustworthy on those knees. Now, we were talking in the Discord earlier today, or not necessarily earlier today, I think it was a couple days ago, where uh, one of our guys mentioned that he felt like Zamir was jump cutting to his left more than he was to his right. He had most recently torn his uh, ACL in his left knee and had his surgically repaired. I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I watched three or four games of him today, I didn't see him favoring one jump cut over the other. So might be looking into that just a little bit too much. I think he is sudden or slowly getting back to what he was. 649. All right, so... As a running back against inside zone, or when we're running inside zone, we tell you on this channel all the time, your key as a running back is the front side guard, okay? The front side guard in inside zone right now is Justin Schaefer. So when you go to take the handoff, your eyes should be locked on that front side guard. Is he winning his position? Is he winning his block? And if you see Zamir right off the snap, if I can pause it for you, boom, he is reading Front side guard right now. His eyes are right through the front side hip of Justin Schaefer. If he sees that Justin Schaefer is losing that guy on his front side shoulder, he immediately knows now I'm reading backside. I, I, I get my eyes back on backside A-gap, which is where Ben Cleveland has just folded this nose tackle, okay? So I hit backside gap, and I bounce, and I jump cut if I have to, okay? But here's my thing. If we're just a little bit more patient, you'll see that a crease does ultimately open up right here in B-gap, but there's another linebacker standing over there, so it wouldn't have really matter anyways. When it comes to goal line, it's make decisions quickly and get north and south right now, okay? Especially if it's just a traditional inside zone read. Nothing fancy, nothing like that, like we're about to show you here in a second. This is the goal line clip. Um, this is what we call the Buffalo package. I call it a Buffalo. I call it Buffalo. I don't know what anybody else calls it. Um, some people like to call it heavy. Uh, some people like to call it train because, uh, you know, getting on the tracks and rolling type stuff. Um, heavy kind of explains itself. We got Jordan Davis in the formation. We've got Jalen Carter in the formation. I always called it, um, you know, something like, uh, what did I just say? Hippo or, you know, in anything big like that. Uh, rhino, things like that. Big animals, right? That's what you're trying to get to. So a simple play design right here. And the, the play design for Zamir, the read is go cut off 99's butt. Okay, find 99 and, and go cut off him because he's going to be making ways. Uh, he's going to be making room for you to be running. Now, the thing about Jordan is, okay, obviously Jordan Davis has been playing nose tackle since he's gotten to Georgia. But prior to that, he was a guard in high school. So he's retained some of these offensive line principles, which is, hey, just go down block, 
right? Give a little bit of half help for Fitz, deliver that block to Fitz, and then go get your combo, the guy you're going to work to, which is nine, and he flat out bodies him, okay? He tosses one shoulder into nine, and his whole body flies, okay? So, easy decision. Let's go find 99 and run it right up his butt. Also love 88's positioning right here. For a guy who's probably only played a little bit of fullback in his life, uh, he was playing tight end in high school down there in Opopka, um, but I love this right here. Getting your head inside, getting lower than the man you're blocking, and just driving his butt right out of the, the hole. Um, that's an SEC, like a high-caliber SEC defender. Now, Big Cat Bryant didn't play like it this year, but over the past couple of years, been a pretty daggum good football player. A freshman right there in Jalen Carter's manhandling him on a goal line situation. You love to see that. Going to 940. And again, later on in the show tonight, we will show you, um, you know, we'll put on display how Todd's been using, Todd Munkin, that is, has been using these backs a little bit differently uh, as the season progresses. I, I do think he does have pretty decent patience in the back end. This is a prime example of it, okay? Look, you got to deliver your blocks. That's the key word. If you're taking notes tonight about how to run inside zone as a running back, it's all about delivering the blocks for your alignment in front of you. So we talk about combos all the time here. Who's working to who, where the combos are going to. I'll tell you right now, on this four down front, okay, they're in two two eyes right here. Well, actually a head up two there and a two eye over here. The point of the formation, the linebacker that the offensive linemen are responsible for is zero and nine right here, okay? So 69 before the snap is working solo on 25 right here. 55 and 54 are comboing this down lineman to this front side inside linebacker. And 74 and 70 are working through 44 to number nine, okay? Now, post snap, there's some slants that work, okay? 25 slants across Jamari's face. Jamari delivers him to 54 and 69 now works up to zero. Let's look at the backside. Okay, Trey Hill takes over number three. 74 and 70 are now working this down lineman to nine. Okay, so the split zone action from zero is coming back and blocking 29. Boom, split zone. Everybody's licked up. Warren McClendon's now working up to the backside inside linebacker. Ben Cleveland has completely washed his guy out of the picture. And now we got this big gaping hole where nothing but green grass in front of him. Zamir White, easy 20-yard gain, nice explosive run. But again, it doesn't happen if Zamir doesn't do this right here, where he settles his feet, allows his blocks to be delivered, allows Warren McClendon to go get a hat on that backside inside linebacker, and then you stick your foot in the gas and get north and south. It's all about patience when running inside zone. It's all about allowing those blocks to work to that second level, allowing them to get up to the next level. Now, let me show you the opposite of patience, if I remember correctly. Because my notes say I want to know what, how they're teaching or what they're teaching on inside zone when it comes to backside cuts. Okay? This, I don't understand. I'll be honest with you. I see this a lot from Georgia's running backs. Um, the way I would teach inside zone, and I'm not near as good, obviously, of a running backs coach as Dale McGee is, but history of inside zone teach me, te tells me you don't need to be so quick to cut things backside. And I feel like Georgia oftentimes is really, really quick. Their running backs are to cut this thing backside. What do I mean by that? So we just talked about the importance of delivering your blocks to uh, for your offense alignment. What I mean by that is, again, they've got to press this front side combo and allow Trey, give him the time to get off to zero, which right here he does. Okay, so nothing about this formation, nothing about the way the blocks developed in front of Zamir tells me he should be bouncing this backside to 33, running it right into 33's face. If he were to slow down, gear down just a little bit, he would realize that 74 has won his reach block. Warren McClendon is, eh, he's turned sideways, but he's winning his job, okay? The crease ultimately opens up right here. The crease, the crease is not available backside, okay? There's a whole bunch of bodies back there not winning their responsibility, whereas on the front side, they are, okay? Again, your initial read front side is front side guard. This gap right here is where they are in, the play is intending to hit. He immediately stuffs it backside. Again, I don't know what they're teaching here. I don't know what Dale is telling him his keys are or what Todd Munkin is telling him his keys are. 
I'm telling you, the history of inside zone tells me we're trying to keep it front side unless there is a gaping hole backside. Let's talk a little pass pro. Everybody wants to know, uh, you know, Zamir was left in for traditional pass pro a lot more than other running backs at Georgia. Why is that? Well, he's a little bit bigger. He's a little bit more physical. Um, and he's just more advanced uh, in terms of being able to pass block. I thought James Cook did a good job this year as well when he was asked to do it. But I'll be honest with you, he wasn't asked to do it a whole lot. He had a bunch of free releases, which we'll show you a little bit later. But this is play action, big boy pass pro. And I'll tell you what, Zamir does a great job adjusting to this free blitzer off the edge. But the only problem is, guys, we can't hit guys that are bigger than us with our feet like this and our body positioning out of the line like this, okay? We've got to be a little bit quicker on the diagnosis of what's going on, and we've got to get our feet square. Whereas in, you know, instead of leaning and having one foot underneath us and one foot completely overextended, if we can find a way to get over there and sink our feet this way, left foot here, right foot here, to where we're working right down the midline of this defender, we're going to have a lot more success in things like this aren't going to happen where one of the strongest pound for pound individuals on Georgia's roster is number three. It's Zamir White. In fact, his favorite thing to do is eat weight in the weight room, right? He wakes up every morning, eats a bowl of 45 pound plates in his cereal. Like this is what this dude lives for. And it doesn't matter if you're, if your body composition, if your body positioning is not proper, when you go to approach a guy like 29 or any for Matt, for that matter, any sec defender, you're going to get thrown out of the club like that. Don't care how strong you are. Don't care how much you lift in the offseason. Don't care how you know physically imposing you are as a runner. If our body positioning is not correct, we're going to get beat. End of story. No point in going any further. So we got to get our feet in our proper alignment. Okay, Got to get our pad level, our body lean in the proper alignment. I see you, Warren McClendon. See you laying on somebody. We're going to talk about Warren a little bit later. I got a coaching point for you. Fourteen forty-four. Now, I, I just have a question here, and I don't know the answer to it. I, I think I know the answer to it, but my question is: Do the great running backs? Do the great running backs, like, and DeAndre Swift, I would consider him a great running back when it comes to inside zone. That's why he's going to have a long career in the NFL. Do the great running backs find this hole over here is my question. Do they see it develop, okay? Do they see that, oh, my front side is driving these guys left and Trey Hill is going to be able to get back and seal Kenny Britt. He's got leverage this way. Everyone's got leverage to create this alleyway over here. Do the great backs jump cut and see this? My answer would be yes. Okay. The good ones do what Zamir does right here. Just take what's given. Okay. Now, Big Cat blows up this split zone action from Fitz. It is what it is. Okay. This backside cut is not there. So at this point, like our front side zone keys should be telling us that somebody's got to be winning over here. And that's exactly what happens. Okay. When I'm, if I'm Zamir and I'm, I've never been a running back, but I know the good ones can see this and just feel it. They've got this positional awareness, situational awareness to be able to know that, oh, 55, if he's winning anywhere when it comes to leverage, it's to the left side of this linebacker. And Ben Cleveland's got that dude swallowed up. So where people are winning with their leverage tells me that's the win, right? That alleyway is the win. Okay, so do the great backs see it? My answer is yes. Do the good backs see it? No. This is the difference between Heisman caliber running or 950 to 1100 yards, right? This right here is the difference between a guy who's rushing on average like Najee Harris. I'm telling you right now, I've shown you clips of it. Najee does this. Najee Harris finds these holes. DeAndre Swift finds these holes. Saquon Barkley finds these holes. Okay, the average to slightly above average backs don't. That's the difference to me. Monday is going to be NBR, nothing but rants. Tuesday, I'm going to bring you some type of film breakdown. Thursday, I'm going to bring you another film breakdown. Okay, Tuesdays and Thursdays, probably going to be for the Patreons only, right? Hold it down for the OGs and the homies. Um, Monday, I'll do those publicly. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put those out to everybody. Give the, broke, uh, give the broke boys something for free. 
right? I shouldn't call them broke boys. Um, give the guys who aren't signed up for the Patreon something for free. Give them a little taste of something. Um, and that's going to be NBR. And I'm going to be honest with you. I love doing NBR. I really love doing these film sessions. Um, I'm really good at this. But, man, you get me wired up and rolling for 55 minutes on topics that I'm passionate about. I think you guys would agree. It's some of my best work. Um, I am going to do some things around the studio again to kind of take out the reverb that we've got coming out. I know you guys keep talking about that. Um, but I do appreciate you for being here. Tell your friends, we will be back. If you're watching me on YouTube, sign up for the Patreon account, man. Sign up for the Patreon account. I was in the Discord today, and we put the, those stunts that I showed you, which you probably didn't see on YouTube because it was the back end of our film session. Um, I drew them up on the whiteboard for the Discord channel today. We put it in the Discord chat. I walked it through. I explained it like a coach would in an actual a room which is where we're going next. We're going to bring a Telestrator in here. Spoiler alert. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.